real lives and real testimonies to bring inspiration and hope to the world. There's so much more to the Christian life than just being married. There's not an official age when I decided to be a virgin. We're talking about biblical manhood plus fighting temptation. Welcome to Crystal's Corner. And welcome back to Crystal's Corner. I am your host, as always, Crystal OG. And today we have Jewel Udemwagu on the show. You said that good, girl. I did, girl. Yeah. You know, we African. You did that good. Thank you. You know, we're African, so we have to, you know, represent for the Nigerians around the world. Um, so, Jewel is a good friend of mine, and she has talked so much with me about her doubts and her faith and just her journey as she follows Christ. So, I decided to bring her on the show and have her express this with you all and, and teach you guys a little bit about what she's learning. Um, just, you know, being on here to be very honest and vulnerable with um, what Christ has taught her, what experience she's had in life. And I'm just so excited to have her on here. And I hope you guys are too because you're in for a treat. Thank you for being on the show Thank today. you for having me. Thank you so much. So let's start with a little like preface of your life. So coming to Christ, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how did that all go? Okay, well, I like to think that it happened in like stages. Mm -hmm. So when I was in college, high school, normal college, rowdy lifestyle, you know how people live in college. And my sophomore year, I decided that I wanted to get serious like with God and do this whole like dramatic lifestyle change, you know. But what I learned is I tried to do things from like the outside in. So mm -hmm. I was like, let me just change my persona. Mm -hmm. Let me change everything that I'm about. So mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be saved. There was really no like heart mm -hmm. change, nothing deep that ha happened. So I did this whole lifestyle change, and the thing that I learned is that it, it doesn't last very long when you yeah. try to do behavior modification. Mm -hmm. So like one month in, okay, I can do this. Two months in, I don't really feel like doing this yeah. anymore. If there's no conviction with the Holy Spirit, then it's not gonna happen. So that after that summer that I decided to change things, I got back to school and I decided to be rowdy again because <laughs> there was no community, there was nobody like giving me any like, hey, what are you doing? No, yeah, like, no accountability. Exactly, yeah. that's the word I was looking for. So I was just doing my own thing. And then, you know, I think as life progressed, I just naturally got tired of the lifestyle I was mm -hmm. living. So, you know, the Holy Spirit was just tugging at my heart, tugging at my heart. And I was like, leave me alone. Like, I'm <laughs> very comfortable in my lifestyle right now. Like, I'm... Instagram queen, I'm oh, call, I'm, I was just so live. Like, You're popping. Like, bad. So I was like, let me just live my live life. Five. Exactly. Let me just live my life. Holy Spirit was like, you know what? This is, we're done with this. Yeah. So it was just a, a, a series of changes over like a summer. I know people have like a specific date where mm -hmm. things happen. I don't have one. Yeah. So it just happened like over a span of time. God was just like, you know what? Let's just reel it back in. So, yeah. you know, like the second half of college, I, I really got serious with my faith. Jesus was just doing a real big thing in my life, and uh, I was at Baylor, where you are now, right? Yeah. And I started a Bible study, you know, just did all these wonderful things, and God has just really been moving in my life since then. That's so, awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's so great to hear because, you know, we always hear about people coming to faith or becoming saved or whatever term you use, but um, kind of in her life, she talks strictly about behavior modification not being what it is. It's more so a heart transformation. I think a lot of times as Christians, we forget, like, you know, even if we're acting holy, it's not the same thing as actually being transformed to be holy. So there's takes it takes two different types of energies to actually you know live in the live in the lifestyle of being a saved Christian versus your effort and actually God's work through you. Um, so I think that's huge to remember whenever you're you know thinking about Christianity or just your walk in general. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about you know faith and doubts and how that's played a role in your life. For sure. So, you know, it's easy when you come to faith. I think like when you're fresh and everything's really new, there's not really uh, a lot of room for doubt because everything's so new, just take it as it is. You're like, wow, this is so new, this is so nice. It's easy. Yeah. But there comes a time, I think, in every Christian's walk where you get to a crossroads, you're like, God, is this really, are you really who you say you are? Are you really you know, who you are, who you say you are in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So after I graduated college, that's when I feel like all these doubts and fear, not even fear, all these doubts about who I was believing in and what I was believing in really came to the limelight. So everything up to college graduation was beautiful. Yeah. My life was great. I was in school. Everything was going according to plan. I was in a relationship. Everything was great. 
But after I graduated college, life started falling apart. And I was like, like wait, no, wait, and I couldn't what's going catch what the fuck is this. Literally, this would break down. This would I would graduate. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing in my life. My relationship, I, I broke up with my boyfriend. Everything was literally just like crumbling to pieces. And I did not even know like which way to look. And I was like, okay, God, you know, so I guess it's a test. You know, James says to count all joy when you face all these things. And I was like, oh, I'm going to count it joy. You know, everything's going to be great. But as soon as one thing would try and, you know, pick itself back up, another thing would fall down. And I was like, okay, God, I need a plan. I need to understand what's going on here. And he wasn't, I feel like he wasn't answering me. Mm -hmm. I would go through phases of just like deep depression. I'd be reading my Bible, trying to understand, you know, God, are you who you say you are? Mm -hmm. You know, all these things were happening. I was having family members getting sick. My life was literally in shambles. I, I graduated from school. I couldn't get a job. Literally, I would go out and, because you know Baylor is expensive. I remember one time somebody came up to me Baylor and they're like, Baylor is expensive. Somebody came up to me, I worked at this photography place, right? I mean, it's not the most glamorous job, but I was making something. Yeah. They're like, so you went to Baylor to get this job? I was like, wow. Oh my God. God. It hurts. No, that was, that was, it that was, it was horrible. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, God, so why am I taking all this insult? You promised me that things would make sense yeah. and they're not making sense I don't understand and it was hard for me because I felt like all the Christians around me had it together mm -hmm. they knew what they were doing with their life they knew what you know what plan God had for them and I felt like no one ever dealt with any type of doubt and as a, a science major like biology major you go through all these things about science theories and evolution and it really started to shake me to my core, like, God, are you really who you say you are? And I think getting to that place of doubt is good. Yeah. Honestly, like, if your faith is not shaken, how do you know it's even mm -hmm. true? Like, if you're not going through any trials, how do you even know that what you're going through is, you know, anything yeah. realistic? Mm -hmm. So over the course of, like, the last two years, it's been, like, a real big, like, battle and yeah. struggle. So I've just taken time. There was a point in time where I was even reading like books on theology. I was there's this book, The Case for Faith. I wanted oh, to yeah, believe. I have it. Yeah, I read like two chapters. I got tired of it because it wasn't giving me one I wanted. They have the movie, you know, The Case for Christ. I tried. It's really good. Though. I really tried. Really, it just didn't do it for me. Wow. I think what I was trying to do was trying to live through others' experiences mm. of coming to faith and understanding their struggles, and that's one thing I I want to caution people against is you can't live through other people's experiences yeah. even through like music which is great people are writing these songs about their experiences with God mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we are not trying to live through their experiences yeah. and make them our own so you know I was reading this book trying to find my faith God where are you I don't know mm -hmm. them. they're like this 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 okay so I have to do this this and this for faith to, you know to come to me for it to feel real it wasn't happening yeah. so I just had to let things happen naturally on their own and really experience God for myself and just believe who he said he was mm -hmm. and all the things that I've gone through in the past remembering those things yeah. you know and reading my Bible and seeing what God has done mm -hmm. it's real like there's no other explanation for the things that have gone on in my life so just holding on to my own experiences and you know counting them as like reality yeah so. that's major that's that's huge I think that a lot of times when our life is falling apart, it can almost be seen as God stripping us of everything For sure. to seek him harder. For sure. You know, not in a sense of punishment or in a sense of I'm a cruel God and I want you to suffer, but no, in a sense of man, like I am your only hope. I am all you need really essentially in life and all things can be found through me. So I think it's huge when God does that. I think it feels very uncomfortable. For like sure. you said, you know, um, a lot of humility is in that. Too much, uh, <laughs> too much humility. <laughs> too much. A, li a little too much. <laughs> a little too much humility, God. But um, a lot of things can be learned learn from that season. And I think that it's all part of the process and all part of your story, you know. I think God has a way of using what you've gone through to prepare you for what's coming. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and it's like, in God's economy, like, nothing is wasted, like, sure. what you've done, what you've been through, the pain, the tears, the doubt, the fear, all of your experiences all add up, nothing is wasted, and I think that's so huge to know, like, man, God is a good God, and he's a good steward of what he does for us in our lives, yeah, too, yeah, so, and that's amazing, so what are you doing now, and how are you kind of just persevering with your faith, if, if that's where you are right now? So right now I am working and applying to medical school finally. It's been like a two year journey. It's really dramatic, like, but God is good. And faith wise, I say that I, I'm in a place where I can trust God to be who he said he is. Wow. And just to see how God has ordered steps, mm -hmm. to see how he's manipulated to which situations that if, you know, he wasn't involved, things would really just fall apart. Mm -hmm for people to be able to, you know, lend a helping hand when they don't need to. And there, there'll be times during this season of life where I get very anxious, like, mm -hmm. God, why does it have to be this way? Why is someone sick? Why, you know, couldn't there be an easier route? Yeah. But I believe that God is definitely intentional in the way he does things. And through this, you know, season, he's showing me that he can be trusted with what mm -hmm. he said he's going to do. You know, I used to always say when Oceans was really big, you know, he, the song says, Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. You know, how are you going to get to where your trust is without borders if you're not in a place where, you know, you're having to like drown and mm -hmm. swim through, mm -hmm. through hell, basically, you know? And I feel like God has really done that in the season of my life and I'm able to trust him with so much more at mm -hmm. this point. So, and t like this next year of my life, I just want God to strip me of like my anxiety that's like my biggest thing and I, I read somewhere like anxiety is you believing that God is not who he is or mm -hmm. not trusting his plan and I don't want to have to do that in this next year mm -hmm. I want to completely believe like God you are who you say you are I don't want my faith to be tossed and turned with every situation mm -hmm. and I think that's a big thing for a lot of people I want to be a person where my faith is sturdy mm -hmm. and firm no matter what comes my way like I want to know that Whatever it is, God is in control. So yeah. that's like my, my mindset right now. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that all this stuff that you've said is, is great. I think that it'll all apply to your life going forward. And I think it's always good just to have that mindset of growth. You know, being open to growth, being open to um, seeking growth in your life and seeking a, a deeper level of faith. I think that our trials can either strengthen us or discourage us. Sure. I think a lot of times, even in James, it says, count it all as joy, you know? When you face many trials, like persevere through those, um, fight through those, cry through those, um, seek God through those. And I think that it's, there's there's beauty in their, that brokenness. There's beauty in brokenness. There's beauty in um, needing Christ and depending on Him and wanting to understand what's going on. And I think a lot of times um, people kind of, I guess blacklist or or discourage doubt, but I think that doubt has a way of being good to leading to more faith. Because if you don't ask questions, then it's kind of like, okay, is this just a you know act? Is it just a thing we're meant to do? Like why? You know what I mean? Like why is God faithful? How is God faithful? What has He done for me? You know, He's out on the cross for us. You know, so I think asking these questions and having that childlike faith and seeking answers is important, you know, to the Christian life and the development as a Christian in general. Um, so yeah, I think that's so important. Are there any tips or anything you'd like to say to any newly grads out there who are kind of maybe in your season right now and kind of really scared and not really knowing what's next? So for new grads, let me just tell you, like, it's real cute right now after you graduate. It's so cute and it's so lovely. And I'm sure you're, like, counting all the graduation money. It's beautiful. But there will be a day where it'll all run out, okay? It's going to disappear. It will. But I just want to tell you to, from the beginning, even when things are good right now, hold on to Christ. Like, that'll be your best bet because the amount of uncertainty, uncertainty that will come up in the next few months, even years, when you're trying to figure out what to do, it can really discourage you and lead you to a place of deep depression and just darkness. And you don't want to get to a point where, you know, you have this dark cloud over you for the rest of your, you know, the, the next two or three years because you're uncertain of where you're going. Make a plan, you know. 
it might not look like everybody else's plan. It might not look like your best friend's plan. It's not the cutest plan, but it is a plan. And don't let people discourage you, you know? Mm -hmm. It's it's not the most orthodox thing to, you know, graduate and not know where you're going, but it's reality, you know? So just have a plan, stick by it. Make sure it's what God wants you to do, not what everybody else wants you to do, you know? It might take some time for you to figure out which way to go, but don't be discouraged about time, you know? It's not running away. Yeah. Don't be a snail and just think that things are going to fall into place magically, but just, you know, stay focused and, you know, God will lead you the way you need to go. Yeah, so there you have it. Those are your tips for all the newly grads out there or for anyone who isn't a newly grad and maybe is still going through these, this season of struggle with what your next steps are going to be. I hope that you guys have learned so much more about faith and doubt and just more about Jewel in general. I pray that her story has encouraged you. Um, I do believe in the power of stories and the power of our experiences helping other people and being able to be vulnerable and share with others for their for their growth essentially. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am so appreciative of your support, of all the likes, the comments, and everything that you guys have to say about um, the webisode so far. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and also I will link all of Jules' information in my description bar below if you'd like to find her on social media or contact her personally. Um, I'm sure she'd be open to taking your requests. So as always, I want to bid you guys adieu, and I hope to see you guys next time on the next episode of Crystal's Corner. Bye! Woo!